Hi booktube, Lynette here again and I am going to do another tag video for you. This tag video is going to be the ultimate book tag and this is a list of 25 questions about you and your reading habits. Question number one is do you get sick while reading in the car? Short answer is no, that is something I have always been able to do. Um, I can read on a car, I found out I can read on a plane, um, I can't read on trains. Um, that's the only form of travel that I absolutely struggle with and I think it's probably linked to the fact that that is the only form of travel that actually makes me feel a bit travel sick. Uh, so yes, I can't read on uh, trains but I can read in the car. Question number two is which author's writing style do you find completely unique uh, for you? Um, and for this I have to say Stephen King. Um, I have loved his book since I was in my early teens. It doesn't matter, it doesn't seem to matter what he writes, so whether it's um, on the fantasy side with his Dark Tower series, uh, whether it's fantastical suspense like Rose Madder, whether it's out and out horror uh, like Carrie, um, then yes, it doesn't seem to matter what he writes. I cannot think of a book of his that, I ha that I've read and have not enjoyed. Um, I just, I love everything he does and everything he puts out. I by no means though have read everything. Um, I don't think I've read even half of his backlist and there's an, I'm definitely not up to date. Um, I'm definitely way behind with keeping up with his releases. But yes, um, definitely Stephen King. Question number three is Harry Potter or Twilight? Do I need to answer? Harry Potter, obviously. I did read Twilight. Um, I read Twilight when I was 30. I read it, so I read it about 12 years ago now. Um, in fact, it was given to me for my 30th birthday and I enjoyed them for what they were at the time. I enjoyed them. Um, do I think Edward's a good example of vampire? No, I don't think um, Stephanie Meyer's version of vampires are that. No. I've read far sexier vampires than that, sorry. Question number four is, do you smell your books? I used to. I don't so much anymore. Um, when Rose Madder came into my possession, yes, I did. I did um, have a good sniff of it. Um, I think that was purely because it was an old favourite coming back into my hands. And um, it was given being given to me by someone who was... Um, very important to me at the time. Um, so yes and no. Um, the majority of my books are um, on my e-reader so I can't smell them. Um, e-readers don't actually really smell of anything so unless you spray them with your um, deodorant or perfume by mistake which has happened. Um, but yes I don't actually sniff my books that often anymore. Uh, it used to be something I used to do all the time. Um, it's like the smell of creosote that you put on fences. Um, I love that smell, uh, the smell of grass um, after it's been cut in the rain. Um, yes, so I do love the smell of new books, um, but no, I very rarely actually smell them. It's probably because I don't actually buy new books that often, um, paperback books, hardback books anymore anyway. Uh, like I say, everything tends to be on my Kindle now these days. Um, but yeah, I do and I don't. Question number five is books with or without illustrations. I have no preference. Um, I think illustrations can actually bring a lot to a story if they're done well um, and with care. Uh, as a as a book as a child, my books had illustrations in, um, and especially um, thinking back uh, to a series I read um, a couple of years ago now and. It escapes me. It's the Galactic Milieu series um, by Julian May. And that has in the back, it has some illustrations which are family histories, family trees, timelines, and they're really informative to the story. So they are really, really helpful. Um, so yes, I have no preference. Um, if they add something to the story, then by all means put them in. Um, if not, I probably wouldn't miss them if they weren't there. Question number six, what book did you love while reading and later find out not to be quality writing? Fifty Shades of Grey. Sorry. 
I don't know why I'm apologizing for that actually. Um, no, Fifty Shades of Grey is not really quality writing. Um, it introduced me to the erotic romance genre. Um, at the same time as I was reading a couple of other books uh, that were introducing me to that genre. Uh, but because of those other books, as soon as I'd finished Fifty Shades, I realised very quickly that actually they weren't that great books. You could chop out half the sex and you'd have one book, just one book. Um, to be honest, if you chopped out all the sex, you'd probably have a novella rather than one book. Um, but yeah, they just, I got bored. I skim read the entire third book and that was the first time I read it, let alone the second time because I did read it twice. Um, but yes, definitely Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, they aren't that great. There is far better out there. Just go hunting for it. You'll find it very quickly. Question number seven is, are there any funny stories about reading from your childhood? No. Um, apart from my brother destroying one of my favourite books. Uh, when he was no older than two, he could crawl. Um, and he crawled into my bedroom and he tore the pages out. Um, not funny, but it's the only story I can think of about reading from my childhood. Um, I was pretty much allowed to be a reader as much as I wanted um, the whole time. Um, my mum made my siblings leave me alone so that I could get on with reading if I was doing it. Um, as long as I did spend a reasonable amount of time uh, socialising with them as well and, and playing board games and, and games outside with them. I wasn't allowed to read 100% of the time but I could read as much as I wanted with, within reason. Question number eight is the thinnest book on your shelves. And I actually am going to give you two answers for this because I have my Kindle books and I have my paperback books. So I'm going to give you the, the thinnest and shortest on each. So on my Kindle, it's a book called At His Service by Delilah Fawkes. This is um, a very short erotic romance fiction and it's 18 pages long, according to Amazon. I don't really remember reading it. I did read it. Um, it's marked as read um, because I have pretty much read all the very short uh, books on my Kindle. Um, so go check it out. It's quite a quick read. I don't remember anything about it, so I can't recommend it. And then the thinnest book on my paperbacks is Elevation by Stephen King. I bought this book last year and I read it, I did read it last year and I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's only about 130 pages long um, and so it is by no means the shortest book. In, I mean that includes um, my Narnia books which are also quite short um, but this is actually shorter than my Narnia books. Question number nine is the thickest book on your shelves and again I'm going to give you two answers, one Kindle and one paperback and the Kindle book that is the longest. Now I have a lot of bind ups on my Kindle. So I have the Lord of the Rings trilogy in bind up on my Kindle. I have some romance novels on my Kindle um, series that are bound into one set and they come in at over a thousand pages on their own. But the longest individual title on its own, um, regardless of whether it's series or not, but it, it's the only book in that format is The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett and this is a thousand and seventy nine pages long and yes I struggled to read it but I got through there through it in the end so there we go you can go back to my February wrap up to find out about that one um but yes that is the longest individual work on my Kindle the longest individual work on my paperback is Memory of Light by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. This is the final book in the um, series that Robert Jordan started, the Wheel of Time series, and it's a thousand and ten pages long in this format. Heaven knows when I'm going to get there. Um, I will get there, but this is the longest book in the series as well. Um, and yes, I think you could murder someone if you really tried with this book. It's actually really quite heavy to hold up um, and it's quite weighty. You could probably do someone some real damage. 
Question 10, do you write as well as read? And no, it's never been an ambition of mine. I sometimes do get flashes of things in my head. Um, but do I want to sit and write them down and expand on them? No, it's never been something that I think I could do or would ever want to do. Question 11, when did you get into reading? I was a very, very small child. I don't remember not reading. I don't remember not being able to read. Um, I think I've said this before uh, on this channel, but my mum says that as soon as I was old enough to understand that the words that were coming from her mouth were associated with the page that she was holding in front of her, and specifically those little squiggles and lines on the page, um, I wanted to hold the book and I wanted to follow on. And like I say, I don't remember never ever being unable to read. So that's, I was very, very young. Question number 12, is your favourite classic book? I'm not really into classics. I did read some when I was a child. And if I think back, probably my favourite of those would be Black Beauty. Um, I did read some Dickens as well. Uh, but the one that probably stands out the most is Black Beauty and it's one that I'm, if I haven't by the time this video goes up, it's one that I'm hoping to reread at some point this year. Question 13, what was your favourite school subject? Uh, languages, arts or English? Easy, English. I'm terrible at languages. I can't draw for toffee. Um, so English it has to be. And it was where I got my best grades as well when I left school. Question number 14 is if you were given a book that you had already read but hadn't liked, what would you do with it? I would be very grateful to the person who gave it to me. Um, I do receive books gratefully. However, I would probably pop it on my shelves for a while and eventually it would end up in the charity shops. Or it would be regifted to someone that I know isn't associated with the person who gifted it to me in the first place um, but that I thought might enjoy it more than me. Question 15, what is a lesser known series that is similar to Harry Potter or The Hunger Games that you want to tell people about? I can't think of any, to be honest. Um, nope, I don't have an answer for that one. Hmm. Question 16, what is a habit you always do while filming except for rambling? I say um a lot. I do say um a lot. I used to try and cut it out of uh, the videos, but I gave up. There was too many. Um, there you go. <laughs> and I also, uh, I do also fiddle with my hair a lot. Um, I usually do that between takes. Um, it was something that was pointed out to me by a viewer who is also a friend of mine um, that I do it a lot. And so I try not to when I'm talking now, although I am using my hands more when I'm talking. Um, and I think that's probably because I'm not playing with my hair. Um, but yes, I have a tendency to play with my hair. So I tend to um, play with it in between um, things that I'm saying. And like now, because I'm talking about it. So I'm doing it. Question 17. What is your favourite word? I think it's hi. Um, because you can express yourself in so many different ways um you can use it feeling apprehensive sad happy while laughing um and it just opens up um the conversation um you're you're acknowledging someone um and that they're there uh so i think that's always a great word question 18 are you a nerd a dork or a dweeb i don't know to be honest i've never looked into it I think if you like something, you like something. And I don't think we should attach negative labels, which I think they are to people for that. So I'm not sure. Question 19, vampires or fairies and why? Um, vampires, probably because I've read a lot of sexy vampires and not many sexy fairies. In fact, the only fairies I can remember reading recently, they weren't described that nicely. So um, no, uh, definitely vampires. Question 20, shapeshifters or angels? And why? Shapeshifters, purely because I've read more of them. I read hardly any angel books. Um, but yeah, definitely shapeshifters. I like the fact that um, you can turn into something else and uh, disappear if you need to. Um, hide in plain sight. Question 21 is spirits or wolves? Um, 
Definitely wolves. Definitely wolves. Again, I've read a lot of werewolf romances, so um, shapeshifter and werewolf romances, so um, not a lot of spirit romances. I can't really see that you could have a romance with a ghost. I'm not sure how that would happen. So yeah, definitely wolves. Question 22, zombies or vampires? Vampires, why would you want to have a romance with someone where bits fall off them? Um, and I've answered all of those from the romance point of view, I've just realised, and that's probably the influence of the writing. Um, I think zombies are scarier than vampires, so I think if I was going to go down the horror route, I would probably pick zombies. Um, but yes, that's my answer to those questions anyway. Question 23 is love triangle or forbidden romance? I've been involved in both. Um, they both hurt equally as much as the other. So I think I'd probably have to say forbidden romance. Um, I mean, I love triangle is forbidden romance anyway. Uh, so I don't see that there's a, much of a difference between them. Um, except for the fact that all three parties might know about each other. Uh, but definitely forbidden romance because I think that would probably be easier to walk away from um, rather than a love triangle. Question 24, full on love story or um, other type of book with a love story on the side? Both. Um, I think there is a place for romance everywhere. Um, so I don't see that there is a choice to be made there and I would read either. And question 25 is, do you carry a book bag? And if you do, what's in it? No, I don't carry a book bag. However, I do carry a book with me. I either have my phone or my Kindle with me at all times. Um, I very rarely take my paperbacks out of the house these days. I'm, I'm Well, these days I only tend to be going to work anyway and I might as well take my Kindle because it's easier to read on my lunch break. Um, but yes, I've always got a book with me. I just don't carry a specific book tag book bag so that's the ultimate book tag i will list all 25 questions in the information box down below so if you want to have a go at this tag then please do if you've liked this video then please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already then please do subscribe and i will see you all again in another video bye